Hello friends, Pastor Emmanuel Obweche here. A very beautiful day, a very beautiful opportunity we have to bask in God's presence again today. I want to welcome you to another great opportunity we have to go from glory to glory through the impact of God's word. I'm sharing with you today from Psalm chapter 16. If you have your Bibles, I would like you to turn over there. Let's read from chapter number 16 of the book of Psalm. Psalm 16, I'm reading to you verse number five. Psalm 16 and verse number five. The Bible says, the Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup, hallelujah, thou maintainest my lot. Verse six, it says, the lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Can you say that? The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Now, this is your heritage. This is your portion. It, it goes ahead actually to say, the lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Hallelujah. Again today, I want to let you know that you have a goodly heritage, regardless of what you see going around you right now, going on in your life, in different areas, you have a goodly heritage. Pastor, how do I know that I have a goodly heritage? Well, God's word says you have a goodly heritage. And the Bible says, let every man be a liar and let God be true. In other words, let every circumstance that you may find yourself faced with right now be defined as a lie and let God's word stand as, as the truth in the midst of any circumstance you may be you know, going through right now. We're reading here in Psalm 16. It says in verse 7, it says, I will bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. Psalm 16 verse 7. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. Amen. Can you, can you just take a few minutes and do that? He says, I will bless the Lord who had given me counsel. You know, there are times you think you don't know what to do. There are times it looks like you don't have an answer. There are times it looks like you've reached the end of the road. But the Holy Spirit wants you to know that you already have the answer. God's word to you today is that God has already given you counsel. Well, Pastor, but I, I don't know what to do. Well, God has given you the Holy Spirit, who's called a counselor. He's there with you to help you. He's there with you to guide you, to instruct you, to lead you in the way in which you should go. In the time of need, what you need to do is to learn to take time apart, to say, Holy Spirit, I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your leading. I want to follow your guidance. And brothers and sisters, he will speak. He will always come through for you at a time when you least expect it. The Bible says here, I will bless the Lord who had given me counsel. Now, this is David speaking by faith. David calling things that be not as though they were. David acting in the spirit of faith and hope. And I want you to know that faith and hope are very critical. You need to have expectation of victory and faith that what God said to you in his word will come to pass regardless of whatever challenge you may find yourself engulfed with. I will bless the Lord who had given me counsel, the Bible says. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. Glory to God. What is your reins? It's talking about your spirit, your conscience, your belly. The Bible says the spirit of man is the, counts, is the, is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is a candle of the Lord, searching the inward parts of the belly. Why is the psalmist saying, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel? The reason is because God has given you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit living inside of you is your counselor. And he will guide you through your human spirit. You know, and for you to draw water out of the wells of guidance of the Spirit of God inside you, you need to learn how to bless the Lord. You know, many times you hear David saying, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Especially at a time where you don't feel like blessing the Lord. But that is a key to drawing water out of wells of salvation. The Bible says, with joy, with praise, with thanksgiving, we draw water out of wells of salvation. Are you going through a situation right now where you need an answer, where you need divine guidance, where you need the Holy Spirit? To give you counsel. Well, 
take some time and begin to bless the Lord like the psalmist did here. He said, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. God has already given you counsel. He has already given you the counselor. He has already given you the answer. Now, what you need now is to learn how to bring the manifestation of all the direction that you need from the realm of the spirit into the physical. And one of the key ways is to learn to bless the Lord. Blessing the Lord at all times. Blessing the Lord when you don't feel like it. Blessing the Lord when it looks like nothing is working. Learning to bless the Lord in all situations is the key to drawing water out of wells of salvation. Hallelujah. We're reading Psalm 16, verse 7. I will bless the Lord who had given me counsel, my reins, or my spirit also instruct me in the night seasons. You know, the Holy Spirit will never leave you without guidance. Many times you find yourself in night seasons. You find yourself in periods, you know, that look unpalatable. You find yourself going through challenges, going through storms. At those times, you need to learn how to listen to the voice of the Lord because the Holy Spirit will never leave himself without a witness in your life. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. And part of how he fulfills that word is to ensure that he causes his voice to come to you at every point of need. Now, well, pastor, I wish God would speak to me. Now, what you need to do is to take some time apart. Take some time apart. Take some time apart to be in God's presence. Take some time apart to be quiet. Take some time apart to pray. And then that voice will start pouring all through your ears. And I'm telling you, it will completely blast every cloud of darkness away. And you will find light shining on your paths. Hallelujah. Verse 8 says, I have set the Lord always. Hallelujah. What a masterpiece of a verse. Verse 8, Psalm 16. I have set the Lord always, not sometimes. He says, I have set the Lord always before me. Glory to God. I believe that this is the key to victory. If you want to experience victory in any area of your life, you need to learn how to set the Lord always before you. The psalmist said, I have set the Lord always before me. In other words, I have kept the consciousness of God's divine presence always before my eyes. I don't ever want to lose grasp of the fact that God's presence is with me. If you are born again and if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, one of the things our Lord Jesus said before he left is that he will be with you until the end of the age. He said, lo, I am with you always. Lo, I am with you always. In Hebrews 13, he said, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. So that you may boldly say, God is with me. Now, the psalmist was able to overcome the different challenges he faced in life because he set the Lord always before him. Verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. You know, there are times you find yourself stumbling. There are times you find yourself moving away from your place of faith. There are times a lot of Christians find themselves, you know, staggering at the promises of God. Now, one reason why this happens is because you take your gaze away from the consciousness of God's presence. Every time you lose sight of the fact that God's presence is with you, or the devil convinces you that God has left you, he is no longer with you, his presence is no longer there, what happens is that you just find yourself beginning to be moved by every storm, by every wind that blows. But when you know that God is with you, you know that his presence is there, you know that his word is yea and amen, you know that he said to you that if you go through the fire, he will be there. If you have to go through the water or the storms, he told you he will not leave you. If you are convinced about the reality of God's divine presence, what will it do to you? It will cause you to be at peace in the midst of the storm. Psalms. Oh, hallelujah. I believe that this was one of the reasons why our Lord Jesus in Mark chapter 4 was able to sleep in the midst of a storm on a pillow. What a, what a, what a, what a, what a life. Jesus was aware that God's presence was with him. 
I want to motivate you today and I want you to know that God's presence is with you. He has not left you. He said, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. God wants you to know that this is one of the covenants he has established with you. It's called the covenant of his presence. Well, pastor, if God is with me, why then am I going through challenges? Well, the Bible gives us accounts, several accounts of people who went through challenges. But in the midst of their challenges, God was there with them. We have a very interesting account in the book of Kings, you know, 2 Kings chapter 6. I would like to read that scripture to you. You know, in this scripture, you know, um, the king of Syria had sent, you know, uh, soldiers to go and arrest Elisha. 2 Kings chapter number 6, because Elisha, you know, had been revealing the secrets that, you know, he, he had uh, been, been given to to. To, to, the, to the king of Israel. He had really revealing uh, the king of Syria's secret to the king of Israel. And, and you know, the king of Syria, you know, got angry and, and wanted to arrest Elisha. And the Bible says, you know, uh, uh, he sent soldiers to go and arrest Elisha. And here in 2 Kings chapter 6, I'm going to read if you have your Bibles, verse number 11. Let's just flow in this account. The Bible says the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of the servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha. The prophet, which is in Israel, tell the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in the bedchamber. So this is what was happening. Elisha, through the gift of word of knowledge, will reveal the secret of the king of, of Syria to the king of Israel. Such that, you know, they were always one step ahead of the enemies of, 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 of Israel. You know, so verse 13 says, and he said, go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. So the king of Syria wanted to arrest Elisha. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dalton. Verse number 14. Therefore sent he to the horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by the night and compassed the city about. I want you to notice that God did not stop them from plotting to come to arrest Elisha. There are times you may find yourself going through the valley of the shadow of death. God may not stop that valley of the shadow of death from presenting itself to you. But one thing it guarantees you is that if you have to go through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. Why? Because his rod and his staff will be there to comfort you and to strengthen you. Hallelujah. God may not stop the enemies from fashioning weapons against you, but he promised to you that no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Now this is what God wants you to be assured of. This is what the psalmist meant when he said, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. I want to motivate you today. Set the Lord always before you. Keep his word always before you. Be conscious consistently of his divine presence, knowing that his word to you will always come to pass regardless of whatever the devil tries to do to stop it. Look at this account. The Bible says in verse number, uh, are you still out there? Verse number 15, we're reading 2 Kings chapter 6. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? As I speak right now, perhaps you are in the midst of a situation where it looks like a host has surrounded you. It looks like the enemy has surrounded you on all fronts. I speak by the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus that every enemy that has surrounded you right now, they hear the voice of angels rushing in. Hallelujah. They hear a strange sound and the strange sound they are hearing is the sound of the chariots of angels. Glory to God. And in the name of Jesus, those enemies back off from you and you gain the victory in that situation in the name of Jesus. You will not need to fight. <laughs> you will not need to fight. That's what the Holy Ghost is saying. All you need to do is be still and know that he that promised you his word will not fall to the ground. The Bible says the servant of Elisha rose up early and he was afraid. Now why was he afraid? 
because he was not conscious of God's presence with him. This is what the psalmist meant when he said, you know, I have set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. And this is what I want to motivate you today. I want you to be conscious when you are in your house that God's presence is with you. When you are on the road, God's presence is with you. When you are in the car, God's presence is with you. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He said, I will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion the shining of a flaming fire by night. Hallelujah. And brothers and sisters, we are Mount Zion. We are God's dwelling places today. He says, a pillar of cloud and smoke will I create upon you in the daytime and my glory shall be a covering from the storms of life. God's glory is a protective covering around your life and God wants you to be conscious of it. Hallelujah. This will give you hope and I want to encourage you, let hope rise right now. In the midst of adversity, let hope rise. In the name of Jesus, let's push down despair and let's cause hope to rise by the word of the Lord. The Bible says in verse 16 of 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha answered and said, to his servant. He said, fear not. Oh, oh, hallelujah. And this is what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Fear not. Fear not. You may be threatened right now, but I say fear not. Fear not. God will make a way for you. He will make a way for you where there seems to be no way. You will come through that storm in the name of Jesus. You will gain the victory in that circumstance. You may not see any wind. You may not feel any physical sign, but the breakthrough and the manifestation of your heart desire comes upon you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear not. Elisha answered and said, fear not. A lot of Christians right now have been, you know, found themselves, you know, engulfed with a cloud of fear. And the Holy Spirit is saying, let's push back that cloud of fear. There's no reason for us to live in fear. We shall be far from oppression, for we refuse to fear. And from terror, for we refuse to fear. We shall be far from, from, from oppression, for we shall not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near us. Fear not, for they, hallelujah, for they that be with us. Look at this. Look at this. Isn't this marvelous? Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. I love what the Bible says in the book of 1 John. It says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We need a whole new God inside consciousness. We need a, a whole new God's presence consciousness. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, his name to us is God with us. He told us, he said, I will be with you. If you go through the storms, I will be there. And Elisha is saying here, fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. In verse 17, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. So Elisha was conscious about something. And this is the reason why he was not moved. This is what the psalmist was saying there in Psalm 16. You know, he said, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. That's Psalm 16 verse 8. If you find yourself being moved right now, what you need to do is to wake up the consciousness of God's covenant presence. God's presence is with you. Hallelujah. He's not just with you. He's in you. He's not just in you. He is upon you. The same spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you now. And God wants you to walk in a consciousness of his divine presence. And that is your key to victory. Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, hallelujah, he saw the divine provisions that God has already made. Oh, glory to God. This tells me that before trouble comes, God already provides the answer. Before the challenge arises, God already provides the solution. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for the manifestation of, of the victory. I pray that your eyes will be open to the provisions that God has already made for you. I believe in the name of Jesus that this day marks a turning point in the midst of that situation that you find yourself in. Elisha prayed and the eyes of that young man was open. And the Bible says, the young man and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. 
my, my, my. This is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews. The Bible says, are they not ministering spirits? Referring to angels sent forth to minister to us who are the heirs of salvation. I want to encourage you that there are lots of angels encamping around you even right now as we speak. And they are there to deliver you because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You know, David, when he wrote that psalm, I believe he was reflecting on all the different challenges he's been through in life. And he realized that the secret why he was able to gain the victory was always being conscious of God's divine presence. And you know, he wrote, he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth, delivereth them out of them all. And I want you to know that you may be going through an affliction right now, but the word of God says God will deliver you out of it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you right now that your eyes will be opened and wisdom will come into your spirit. Understanding will come into your heart. Your spirit will be instructed in the name of Jesus and God will give you the necessary counsel through the ministry of the counselor that will order your steps and guide you into the answer that your heart desires. Yes say at the spirit of the Lord look no further from where you are for my presence is with you in the name of Jesus think nothing in your heart say at the spirit that I am dealing with you according to your errors no 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 I said to you in my word say at the Lord that I have not rewarded you according to your iniquities. You know, there are many times the devil makes you want to begin to think that God is punishing you because of your sins or God is dealing with you because of your mistakes. We notice in this scripture, Elisha did nothing wrong. In fact, Elisha was working for God and because he was working for God, that's why the enemies attacked him. And there are times when you are actively involved in church and actively involved in serving God and ministering to other people and providing support for them sometimes the enemy will attack you you know some people don't know these things and so they start crying and they're like you know pastor I don't understand I pray I tithe I do so many things for the house of God and yet I don't know why the devil busies himself knocking on my door well the reason why the devil is trying to attack you is because you are on the cutting edge and you must not be afraid. You should not let fear come into your heart. Rather, you should stand your grounds in faith like Elisha and be confident in God's presence and declare that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You need to learn to look that devil at the eyes and say, Satan, I refuse to be afraid. I am steadfast. I am unmovable, I will continue to abound in the work of the Lord. There is nothing you're going to do, Satan, that will make me quit in my dedication unto the Lord. One thing I know is that if you're steadfast, if you refuse to be moved, God will always come true for you. Hallelujah. And I see you in the name of Jesus gaining the victory right now. In the name of Jesus, I see you coming to the place of joy unspeakable. I proclaim over your life today in the name of Jesus answers to every area of need in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God's presence is with you. Don't forget that. It is a covenant. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I want you to stand fast in that and let hope rise in your spirit. No room, no room for despair. No room for being depressed. No room for giving up. We are more than conquerors. And I know you will surely overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe, shout aloud, Amen. Hallelujah. What a joy it is to have you with me today. I believe God's word has touched your life. Do share this message with your friends. You know, if you watched us on Facebook or wherever you watched, you know, share the, share the video. Start a watch party. Get your friends to, you know, to watch the, 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 the videos and, and, and send them the audios and let it bless their lives. Amen and amen. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. I also want to encourage you to download our mobile app. You can get on the Google Play Store or the iStore to download our mobile app. There are messages streaming on the app and I believe these messages will change your life. The name of the app is DRM Live, D-R-M-L-I-V-E. You can download it from the iStore 
or the Play Store by searching for the word, or you could just search for Pastor Emmanuel Ogbeche. I really love spending this time with you, and I really believe God's word has changed your life. Until I come your way again, Pastor Emmanuel Ogbeche here asking you to keep living in God's divine presence. God bless you richly, and bye-bye.